Alrighty then, we're back. Let me scooch this a little bit closer to me. Um, and we are now going to try to get to Robin Hood's good ending. Which I'm not sure if that's a thing. Oh, yeah, that's such a terrific. Um, but we're going to attempt to get at it. Well, the best ending that we can get from Robin Hood, at least. I don't know if he'll love us in that ending. <laughs> but maybe he won't be so weird. <laughs> Uh, there we go. He might love us. Maybe. C'est possible. Mm. Okay. <sighs> I'm really interested to see though. Because, um. I. Like. As much as I complained about uh, about everything that was happening with Robin Hood, I I still think it's an interesting route and that he's an interesting character, and I like I like the interactions between him and Hamlet. Not just because they're dark, but they're one of like the many character relationships in this game that are really interesting. Like I like. Um, Karami and Kiri, obviously. And then I I like, uh, as, as I said, uh, Robin Hood and Hamelin. And then I like, wait, hold on. Nothing. Hmm. Huh. Nothing in particular, I take it. Yeah, I guess I can't even remember that much. We're talking about my fears. Not even syringes. If it's not too big. I'm sure he'll be fine. Haha. <laughs> well, that's good. The fear of needles, though I guess acmophobia is more precise, is quite common among the townspeople. It creates a lot of trouble for me. I think you'll be a very good patient. Duh. Okay. Oh! That's right. I keep forgetting these things are things. Dr. Crow, huh? There are any number of blackbirds, so why a crow? Well, no matter. Crows aren't particularly odious. And I don't particularly care what other people think of me, anyways. I was just saying. Oh yes, and I like Carmi and Scarlet's uh, relationship. And ah, oh, morning already. I guess I fell asleep reading again. I know I shouldn't, but I can't help it. We've had such nice weather the last few days. The sun is sparkling on the surface of the river, and the flowers have been blooming happily. I want to show you how beautiful it is outside. I want you to hear the music of nature. I want to walk by your side, anywhere you want to go. Until that day comes, I continue to endure and live on. Duh. Duh. Okay. Um. 
I think Axel and Fuda's relationship is also pretty good. Like, I know Fuda's reactions to things aren't, like, super deep, but her and Axel's uh, interactions always seem very wholesome. (laughs) And I love that. Um... Now you have to take it all. I don't want it. Your medicine is so bitter and it's not even red either. I can only take red medicine. Master, you will not be rid of your cold if you continue this matter. This manner. <laughs> don't worry, I'll fight it off with my spirit. <laughs> I, I really don't want to cough on command. I do it enough already, please. Thank you. You came to the clinic because it wasn't getting any better. No, no, no. I'm never taking it. Herr Robin Hood, it seems my master's decision is most firm. Is there no other option? Oh, hey, Melissa's is German, too. I don't mind. There are other options. Oh, I don't have to take it? You should have said that from the start. (laughs) You're rather small, so this dose should be sufficient. What? Robin Hood, what is that ominous item in your hand? A shot. You, you are going to stab me, are you? Oh, but I will. Don't worry, it won't hurt more than getting hit by a brick. (laughs) No, no, I hate shots, never. You carry guns around and inflict all sorts of violence, but you can't endure the pain of a tiny little needle. I find it difficult to understand. Or, furthermore, to sympathize. Mm. There are a lot of Robin Hood's little secret bits. I did not think there would be this many. Um, um, I also weirdly appreciate Dorian Gray's and Man Boy's, um, interactions. Like, okay, so the interactions that I like vary from wholesome to weird and strained and to the point where one of them is totally chill with torturing the other one and the other one's like, yeah, take it. Yeah, I'm gonna take it. Fuck me up more, daddy. Which was my Hamelin impression without using my Hamelin voice. Um... This game is great. <laughs> um, okay, so we get kidnapped. Show up a thing. We find out Axel's not dead. There's violence in the town. And we skip over man boy. There we go. Um, okay. There we go. Doctor, are you in? 
Hansel and Gretel, what do you need? Um, so I want you to examine Gretel. Gretel? I told him I didn't need it, but Hansel insisted, so I had to come. She has a burn on her arm. Can you heal it, doctor? Oh. Very well. Gretel, could you roll up your sleeve? Why? I don't have superpowers. I can't inspect your wound through your clothes. <laughs> You're not a very good doctor, are you? <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Did you receive this wound in the conflict with the Wolfgang? Wow, you knew. Are you psychic? I simply made a guess from the state of the wound. Nothing to be so impressed by. You shouldn't be doing this, Gretel. Aren't I always telling you to come see me right away when you're injured? I don't want to rely on you. I don't trust outsiders. I couldn't care less if you trust me personally, but I do wish you'd trust my abilities. How's your wound, Doc? Can you heal it? Of course I can. It will heal in a few days if she simply follows my instructions. Ah, oh, that's great, Gretel. And you were complaining about how much it hurt, too. I, I was not. <laughs> My apologies. The South must sting a bit. I don't see why I should trust your abilities. You're completely incompetent, you quack. Quack, you're the only one who calls me that. Mm. I don't think I have any other commentary prepared. Uh, Dang it, cause I wanna. Um. So you're married? You're married man. Wait, am I doing this right? Yeah, I'm doing this right. Yeah. Look it up. Did you hear that? I got the chance to talk about you for the first time in ages. I wonder if you remember when you entered the pageant. We weren't dating yet. I was so nervous back then. I worried that you were interested in someone else. I couldn't watch until the end, because there was an emergency I had to attend to. I had to go back to the clinic just before the awards ceremony. That evening, you came to the clinic yourself to show me the trophy you'd won. <laughs> you told me. You told me that you decided to tell me how you felt when you won. You had no idea how bewildered I was when you did that. Yes. If 
pageant was how we started dating. The trophy is stored away in the storehouse. Whenever I see it, it reminds me of when you were still well. I'll bring it out when you wake up again. Then we can chat about the old days together. I am also half expecting <laughs> for us to be like, Doctor, have you figured out how to download the human consciousness? Just put that into our bodies and we will willingly submit because of course we will. Um, be annoyed? Okay, fine. We'll be annoyed. <sighs> oh yeah, this is the part where we figure out that's his face. Is that true? Yes, she had a hallucination and collapsed. Oh. Did she eat something strange? Maybe Kiri fed her something. No. I don't believe that's it. She must have just been exhausted after the pageant. Take her back to the estate with her trophy, please. Understood. Thank you for contacting me. I was a little worried, but I think I covered it up well enough. Yeah, well, you'd think wrong. I wonder if Bunny came to show me her trophy. She really doesn't need to come back just to show it to me. But how to tell her? I can't exactly tell someone unfamiliar with the circumstances to not pour salt into old wounds. But it was rather surprising that the same thing happened again. Your eyes were wide when you showed up here too. Okay, but it also might be a thing where we're like, oh my gosh, the town has this thing about, like, soul resurrection stuff, and, like, the townspeople are, like, in, um, uh, pancakes sure are delicious, by the way, um, but, like, the townspeople are all up in, a. A situation where resurrection keeps happening so it's like a freaking cloud atlas where they're like oh my gosh we were we're soulmates in every single life and I found you again my love my more yes I need this I haven't been able to smile from the heart since the daytime stopped for you. I lost the ability to have any hopes for other people or believe in them. I hate it when people ask me how I'm feeling or worry about me. I hide my face behind this mask so that no one can see it, so that no one can try to interfere with me. I've stopped time for myself, just like it stopped for you. As husband and wife, we ought to be together. 
Don't you agree? My sleeping beauty. I mean, that's a good princess reference, but I'm pretty sure her name is Snow White. I'm actually, like, almost 100% certain that that was the name that we were told that was her name. Not in this route or the last route, but, like, in, uh, Hamelin's route, I believe. I think. I don't know. <laughs> Find way. Boop. It must be tough. That must be tough. It's tough. In what way? So, if there's no disease you can't cure, does that mean you've never failed to treat one before? Well, that would be true. Isn't that a lot of pressure? That you can't fail? Well, of course I can't fail. The practice of medicine is all fundamentally about extending life. The patient's life depends on my success. I guess it's true. I just thought you might find those expectations a little oppressive. Or suffocating, even. Having someone's life in your hands is a serious responsibility. <laughs> I did feel that pressure at first. Really? Yes. It's not as if I was lauded as a talented physician at the start of my career. Theoretical knowledge and practical experience are very different. When studying, I could take things at my own pace, but the patient's condition sets the pace in the field. But it all adds up. It adds up and starts to dull you emotionally. No matter how good or bad something is, once you grow accustomed to it, it stops phasing you. Your emotions flatten out in proportion to how much experience you accumulate. A body becomes merely a cadaver. You can stop feeling anything about it. Handling corpses becomes no different from wa waking, eating, and sleeping. It becomes very natural. Doctor... Oh, look at me. I didn't intend for this to take such a dark turn. Both you and I are alive. We should spend our efforts on more positive subjects. Yeah, that wasn't what you were saying when you were threatening to throw me in a cage. But you know, what do I know? <laughs> ah, look okay. it. Now, shall we begin again tonight? I sent away for a medical text from a faraway town that absolutely exists. Perhaps it might give me a hint as to how I might wake you up. Yes. You aren't dead yet. You're just asleep. That's all you'll do until the day when I can cure you comes. There's no disease I can't cure. I'll find a way to wake you up, for sure. So please, wait until then. Oof. Um, okay, and this is when uh, Oz Manor gets attacked by uh, Hansel and Gretel. Ah! The volume is up a little loud for me. <laughs> Hold on one second. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, what am I saying? Scary. There we go. Welcome back, Signorina. Did you spend the day with Dr. Robin again? Yes. We had quite a feast of desserts. 
Yes, certo. Details, please. Ah. Uh, oh. Wait, hold on. Desserts. Details, please. Please explain in detail what you ate and how much. Axel is in the mukbang. D details, huh? Don't look so jealous, Axel. You've eaten plenty of sweets yourself. That's different. I'm painfully curious about what sorts of sweets Dr. Robin Hood prepares. Hansel and Gretel just left them at the clinic. He didn't make them himself. <laughs> Hansel and Gretel. The stuff they make is painfully delicious. I'm so jealous. Ah... Uh... Axel's resentment regarding sweets is spiteful, fierce, and cryptic. You should brace yourself, Senorina. <laughs> That's cute. It's cute as heck. It is the heckin' cutest. Mm. All this happens, we call him Scar. Um, I don't know if I've talked about it yet, but I am really curious if this outside of town place really exists. Maybe I'm just angry. I, I know Scarlet wasn't directly involved. And what happened. I know it's pointless to hate or resent him for it, but that anger has to go somewhere. I can't help hating everything relating to that man. Oh, that's another um, interpersonal relationship that I like looking at. Um, Hamelin and Scarlet. That, that one's cool. I just think they're neat. I wonder how that makes you feel about me. Would you sympathize? Nah. Perhaps you chastise me for it. I want to hear your voice. How long has it been since I last heard it? I try to remember it, but I have no confidence that the voice in my mind is right anymore. You're right here next to me, but you're still so far away, my beloved. Mm. Aww. I like I like the idea that uh, I like that he talks to his, his sleeping wife I'm a sucker for that kind of thing I really can't take my eyes off her. Huh? No, I guess that's not quite true. I don't even know if I'll see her once a week. I keep thinking about you. About what ways you resemble her. And what ways you're different. I keep seeing you in her. She's so reckless. Just like you. 
He did all sorts of things like that. Back then, you were always making my heart race. You were always in the centre of my thoughts and once I got interested I couldn't let go. I felt like I didn't need anything else if I had you. I, I hope she can find someone who makes her feel that way. I wonder why she came to see me, of all people. How strange. Yike. Scarlet didn't really need to apologize. Best boy can do no wrong. I like you better this way. Like you better. <laughs> Karen Maria said it's been several years. That did not feel anywhere near right. Hold on one second. <clears throat> okay. Crikey. Mmm. Karamiya said it's been several years. I wonder exactly how long it's been since then. I don't know. I can't remember when it happened. I don't want to know. I'd like to believe that it's all a dream. But reality. The person laid out before me was real. And this reality isn't something that can be quantified. Days, years, centuries. It's all nothing. Hooks of my heart, which is not the right accent. Give me one second. Okay. This is hard. This is difficult. Okay. The cogs of my heart won't turn even a millimeter until you wake up. They'll stay at zero. You love wifey, like a lot. I, I hope that, that his good ending has him not quite going quite so off the rails about everything. Children. Children, what was it you said back then? Oh, now I remember. You said you wanted a son. I said I wanted a daughter. And we quarreled a bit. <laughs> you threatened me. By saying how hard it would be to give my little girl away when she gets married. I gave up in the end. Dude, can you imagine? Like, I'll, I'll get to this in a second. I'll save this. I'm going to put a pin in this. It was just a hypothetical. But we both got so serious about it. I miss that.
was a few days after that, I think, that we found out that you would have a hard time conceiving. Aww. You cried alone where I couldn't see. But it didn't matter to me. I didn't care. As long as I had you. And... It was just that it would be harder. Not impossible. There were a variety of infertility treatments. Let's talk about children again. When you wake up. Aww. Aww. <laughs> My heart hurts. <laughs> I... Uh, that's so cute. But also, imagine being unkillable immortals that outlive many, many generations of the town, from what we've been told. Not only marrying a human that you have to outlive, but also then... Talking about conceiving a child, which you will have to outlive, and all of all of your grandchildren and great grandchildren and etc., to the point where you probably don't know who in town that isn't related to you, just because that's that's just how it how it be. Ah, uh, I guess that's why we don't see a lot of the immortals like coupled. Because that, that makes sense a little bit. Okay. <sighs> I'm so exhausted today, even though it's a Sunday. I had so many emergency cases. When Bunny, the girl I've been talking about on occasion, came to see me, I wasn't particularly busy, though. Just after she left, all hell broke loose. I was treating patients until just a few minutes ago. Why don't people take better care of themselves? They always come to me when they're feeling bad. There may be nothing I can't cure, but that's only because that they get here before it's too late. I wish people would consider their health a little more. Now. I guess I should continue my research. I finally received that medical text I sent for. Maybe it'll give me a hint about how to wake you up. Although, my hopes of that nature have been crushed every single time. Ah oh, well, I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep trying, because this is what drives me. That's why we found him napping. He's been, like, burning the candle at both ends. Also, I do kind of wonder if the reason she can't really conceive is because he's an immortal. Like, I feel like, well, if it was a problem with him being an immortal and her being a mortal townie, like... Wouldn't it... Uh, I don't know. Something about her just bothers me.
What happened between us isn't exactly a secret. Those in the non-ruling class aside, everyone in the ruling class knows. It's common knowledge, so I shouldn't care if she finds out. There's just... Something about her eyes. Her innocent eyes throw my emotions into disarray. I don't dislike her though. I think Bunny is a good kid. Maybe too good, even. Perhaps that's why she irritates me so. I was awful to her. How childish of me. Hold on, let me make sure that that's the right ending. Okay, cool. We're groovy again. Where? Okay, there we go. Um, the fuck was I saying? But yeah, so if you if it was that, then you would consider that the ruling class would be the ones that would be having trouble conceiving. The doctor's wife, huh? I wonder where Bunny heard about that. Beats me. I'm not aware of how much she knows. Since we decided to keep quiet, we can't really probe further. Maybe Dr. Robin's still hanging on to that faint hope. Yes, of course. That's why he wears that silly mask. That's not a fashion accessory? Are you being serious? Oh, no. Sorry, that was an unfunny joke. He has been wearing that mask ever since then. I don't know what his motivations are, but he has been hiding ever since. Yes, ever since that happened, He's been behaving strangely. That alone isn't odd, but personally, I think he's been dragging this on much too long. You really are a cold bastard, but I guess you can't help it, seeing as you're incapable of sustaining any kind of feelings for anyone. Don't you talk to me like that. I do have some experience with things of that nature. Seriously? Oh, <laughs> name one. I'll wait. I'm not saying. Why would I tell a stupid lion like you? When you make excuses like that, you might as well not have, after all. I'll leave it to your imagination. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> I love this. All of the things. I have come across few things which I do not love. And even then, it, it really just makes me curious about how on earth this master grand ending could possibly um, make everybody happy. Because there's so many things wrong in this town. There's no way... Bercy, did your parents tell you anything about Robin Hood's marriage? Marriage? He's married? Oh, I see. So you haven't heard it. Yes, I don't really know much about him in general. Um, did something happen? You could say that. It's nothing good. 
so you shouldn't stick your nose into it either. Go polish your sword in preparation for training tonight. Immediately. E yes, ma'am. Mercy is cute. Y'all can fucking find me. I guess enough time has passed that there are people who don't know about it. And no matter how much time has passed, he continues to be frozen in that spot. Mm. As someone not directly involved, I can only make a vague guess at his sadness. I wish he would get back on his feet soon. Hmm. Well. Hmm. Cool, so we got the meteor shower things. Boop. My boy. She really surprised me. Uh, nope, that's not it. I need water. Hold on. Aha. She really surprised me. Do you remember when she freaked out thinking I had a severed head? She really caught me off guard then. Today was the same sort of deal. I thought she was going to stop coming to see me. But she came back and even apologized, even though she didn't need to. Why does Bunny care about me? I'm sure there are more interesting things to do in town than waste time with me in a clinic. You're a woman. Surely you can understand her feelings. Well, you know, she wouldn't have fucked with mine. As a man, I can't even imagine what you might say. It's quite a lonely feeling. I don't know, man. Sometimes when you're with a person and you know them pretty well, you can just guess what they'd say to something. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I don't think that's true. There we go. The meteor shower gathering finished safely. There were a few burn cases that I treated, but nothing more. Oh, and Bunny stayed with me to chat. That's why I'm so late coming to talk to you. I'm sorry. When I was with you, my eyes sparkled just like hers. No, perhaps not quite as much as hers do. She genuinely believes in the myth of the gathering. To me, it was simply a convenient excuse to leave the clinic. Most people were pretty understanding when I said I wouldn't be on call. Yes. As far as I was concerned, the media shower gathering was a convenient excuse to see you. I thought about wishing upon the stars so many times. Wishing for you to wake up. But I never actually did the, that. Because I wanted to save you myself, 
not leave it up to anyone else. And I was scared I'd have to confront the fact that my wish couldn't come true. Rituals like that are just rituals. Most of those wishes don't come true, and those that do, do so mostly by coincidence, after all. But, I still didn't like the idea. It made my dream feel impossible. That's why I'm jealous of Bunny. She can face everything without fear, and honestly tell people how she feels. I don't have any inclination to follow her lead, since I'd rather not become so rash at this age. But I find the simplicity appealing. Aww. He did not tell his wife that we confessed. Well, maybe we didn't confess. Confess. I'll try my best. I think I was just talking about how I don't trust other people. Maybe it was on the spur of the moment. But what a thing to say. I don't regret it, you know. I do think I could use the help. I thought about asking you, you know. I was going to ask after the ceremony, once things had calmed down. It's not a lie, but... I wonder why I feel like I'm betraying you. I know how badly betrayal hurts, too. I'm sorry. Oh... He does feel like he's betrayed. Well, he did. <laughs> Still a little bitter about that. About the whole weirdness. I had expected people to come check on you, but Axel certainly has been coming a lot. Is that unusual? Yes. He's not one to take an interest in others. No, that's not quite it. That's how he is on the surface. He can't help caring about other people, yet... He keeps himself at a distance and huddles in a shell. That's the kind of person he is. Maybe that's why they call him Robot. Huh? That's what Mr. Karamiya and Mr. Kiri call him. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps it's because he never voices his thoughts. The poor thing. Is it a sad nickname? I don't know. At the very least, I wouldn't call him that. Oh, you sure seem to know a lot about Axel, Dr. Robin. It's not just him. I'm thoroughly acquainted with everyone who lives in this town. The only people I don't know particularly well are the residents of the forest. And you, Bunny. The 
fact that I have the opportunity to work alongside you is rather fortuitous with that in mind. This way I can observe you. Observe me? Precisely. It's much easier to determine the cause of diseases if you're familiar with a patient's lifestyle, habits, and personality. I don't have sufficient information on you yet. I would like to know more. That's just being a good fucking doctor. My dude is a good doctor. Shitty person, though. Which you think would not be something... Like, you think being a good person and being a good doctor would be... Synonymous, but you know, there are probably quite a few. <laughs> um... What? How could I? Of course I do. Oh, of course I do. Ah, okay. That darn Robin Hood is so stubborn. He's impossible to control. You look way more stubborn than him to me. Yeah. That is not true at all. My thinking is much more flexible than his. Even if someone I cared about deeply was hurt, I wouldn't keep dragging things on this far. The woman in question is the woman he pledged his life to. It must tear him up inside. He isn't the only person to ever lose a spouse. There are plenty of widows and widowers in this town. Women who have lost their husbands live their lives to the fullest, looking toward the future. Men are such weak, weak creatures. Wow. Okay. Well, compared to you, Miss Kitty, all uh, us men are weak and pathetic. So this is where you were, Lady Pashi. You know, mercy. I was looking for you, Lady Pashi. Um, were you out with Mr. Carmia? Not doctor, he doesn't have a degree. <laughs> oh, that's right, I ordered that sword you asked about and got all that sorted for you. <laughs> Don't you eh <laughs> me, fool? Mm. First off, you're in front of the dawn of Familia Oz. Don't go blabbing information like that. Second, don't you dare call me Pashi. I ship it. Wait, no, wait, that's right. Pashette is... Um... homosexual <laughs> uh, I'm sorry that's just what I've always called you I wasn't thinking weren't thinking when it's inside our estate that's one thing but in public unforgivable don't be so hard on him Pashi Shut up, don't you dare call me that. We're going home, Bursty. I'm going to have to beat some manners into you. Oh, okay. Um, please go easy on me. Like hell I will. Yes, ma'am. Miss Kitty sure is scary. I... that's gonna be a mess. But I still ship their friendship. I'm expecting good things from those interactions. Uh... Well, yes, but I think you should use it on something for everyone. Everyone? Like who? Um, well, everyone in town? 
If I can benefit the townspeople, of course I will. When I pay for my alcohol, I am patronizing the bar. When the bar pays, buys more alcohol with that money, the brewery profits. In other words, my drinking is a positive contribution to society. Sure thing, Kiri. I'll explain that one to my mom, see if she likes that. If that's a good explanation for my alcoholism. <laughs> oh! You... You certainly are good at twisting words around to suit your needs. <laughs> Please, don't be so lavish with your praise. You're embarrassing me. And then no, that's when that happens. Oh, if it isn't Kiri. Welp. <laughs> Dorian Gray acting as a priest through this whole route, like he could do nothing wrong. Dorian Gray. How odd to find you here, of all places. And during the day, no less. Don't night hours like you melt away in the sunlight. For your information, I am not a vampire. I see you came from the clinic. What were you doing there? Nothing related to you, I assure you. If you'll excuse me. Do you feel responsible? <laughs> Do you feel guilt towards Robin? Is that why you pretend to visit just on a whim? Or am I wrong? That look on your face. I'm right, aren't I? It is truly amusing that you have a conscience. You misunderstand me. I harbor no feelings of guilt. I did not cause that incident. I wish you'd have some sympathy for me as a fellow survivor. Just between the two of us, the feeling I'm harboring at the moment is irritation. Irritation? Yes. I'm frustrated because he won't accept his fate and refuses to move forward, imprisoned by the past. That Robin Hood is too naive. <laughs> he acts like the hero of a tragic play, stubbornly clinging to his past. He's such a dull man. He rubs me the wrong way. You loathe him so, yet you seek out his company? I think it might be in your best interest to avoid him. I don't loathe him. I almost wish that was the case. He bothers me, if not else. It's almost like I'm looking in a mirror. I end up seeing myself in him. It irritates me. Have you lost someone dear to you as well? Well, what do you think? I don't have the slightest obligation to tell you. I've said too much. Please, forget this conversation. As you wish. Come to the church if you feel so inclined. I'll take your confession. Huh. So that brings up the question. Who the fuck did Kiri lose? Because we didn't get any of that in his route.
Not that I could tell anyways. Uh, wait, hold on. Absolutely. There we go. And that's when he has dinner. So he comes to his wife and it's like, I had dinner with a lady that wasn't you. I dined with someone else for the first time in ages. I wonder if you'd get mad if I told you I ate with Bunny. You wouldn't be upset. Shouldn't be, at least. You're still asleep, after all. When you were well, you came over to eat with me every day. You always told me how good my cooking was. And of course it was good. I started cookie ju cooking just for you. Do you know that? I'm quite dexterous, so the practice of cooking wasn't really an issue. The real issue was how to make something to your taste. Everyone's senses are slightly different. They may be similar, but they're never identical. I was always anxious until the food got into your mouth. I couldn't tell if you'd say it was good or not. You never let it show on your face, either. I've only been making food for myself lately, so I wasn't sure how it would turn out. Given how she reacted, it seems my skills haven't gotten too rusty. So, I think I'll be able to make you something delicious when you wake up. Just you wait. Of course, can't wait for you to wake up either. Dude. It doesn't matter what it was. She would have gotten cancer. She would have gotten the old age. And that shit would have been agonizing for this dude. Um. Leave it to fucking me. I'm going to touch the door handle though. Well, I guess I best return to my research. Huh? What's this? Fingerprints. Perhaps they belong to Bunny. It's locked. Good. She shouldn't have seen inside. I didn't tell her not to try to open it. I guess it was my fault. Mm, so next you try to... You try to be like... You try to play it... Oh, like, don't open the door, tee hee tee hee. I don't think I'd ever be so unsettled that I'd drop a cup like that. Perhaps I've done something awful to her again. She could have just answered no, since she wasn't supposed to be in here. She probably didn't say anything because she's so conscientious, conscientious of others. I'd intended to put some distance between us, but she keeps on enroaching, encroaching on my privacy. I guess that's another way she resembles you. Back then, I was even less sociable. 
but you clawed your way into my heart. I should have been annoyed by how much you dragged me around. I guess I just got used to it. Because after a point, I was the one chasing you. I still am now. I'm hopelessly attached to you. Maybe she's the same way. Maybe she's developed a fondness for me. Just like you did. If that's the case, I pity her. Her love will never bear fruit. Gosh, man, you gotta calm down. <laughs> you are the only one for me. I have no desire to love anyone but you. I decided to never open my heart to another person again on that day. Dude is faithful as fuck. Good quality. The revenge shit, though? As I predicted, she does have feelings for me. I wonder if you'd laugh at me for being so conceited. I made my hypothesis based on her behaviour thus far, and it turned out to be correct. It's the same with you, actually. I have no idea what you saw in me, though. All I do know is that there are some truly strange women in this world. You included. Oof. And then we find out about the coffin. I'm back. Today was exhausting. I called out to one emergency. I was called out to one emergency after the other. They tried to drag me out drinking with them in the end. I couldn't exactly take off my hood though, so I escaped and came home. Ah. I have good news too. I got word that the book I sent off for has arrived at the neighbouring town. I'll finally get my hands on it. And then... Ah. These documents are out of order. And there are some footprints that shouldn't be here. These are piles of books on cry either. And someone else's fingerprints are on the glass. Who came in here? Oh. Oh. And this is the part where we get in trouble because we found out about his not dead but dying wife and then we confess to priest Dorian Gray money oh no it's just me hi man boy what is it it's unusual for you to be injured no I am not injured Dorian Gray asked me to assist you. Dorian, 
So he said. He's such a hopeless man. Quite. Oh. Pretend you didn't hear that. What do you require assistance with? I don't need your help. You can go back. But I thought you were short-handed. I'm busy, but I'll manage on my own somehow. I've been managing on my own this whole time, after all. I see. Well, if that's what you want, Dr. Robin, I will leave. Please don't try to take on too much by yourself. That's my line. Aren't you the one with far too much on your plate? Fair enough. But the same could be said of you. Thank you for always listening to my complaints. I'd be happy to return the favor sometime. I love it. Perhaps I will take you up on that. Two overworked people who deal with dead bodies a bit too often. Yes. And one with a really oppressive master who needs to lay the fuck off. Let the man live his life. Man boy did nothing wrong, 2020. Uh, okay, we, have, we got all this. We go back to him. He's like, oh my gosh. Dorian Gray. My. Do you have eyes in the back of your head? I could smell you. I know you by the smell of your cologne. What do you want with me? I thought it'd be nice if we had a drink on occasion. I brought the absinthe you love so much. He wants out that fucking bod. That body in the back that you got. What's so interesting about drinking with me? You're not going to gain anything from it. Boom. Don't say that. Aren't we... old friends? A clinic isn't a bar. Should a priest even be drinking in the first place? I had thought you might be depressed, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Well, I'm sorry for betraying your expectations. I'm not so young that I fall into a depression because something unpleasant happened. I'm sorry for wasting your time. Even though you came to comfort me. Comfort. <laughs> that almost makes me sound saintly. I just came to have a drink. Checking on you was just a pretense. We're the ones who enjoy this type of alcohol, after all. I thought you preferred rum to absinthe. I think the bottle you left here sh before should be around somewhere. I'll go find it. Give me a moment. These two are friends. <laughs> you really hung on to that. Oh no, what if it's in the back? What if the body is in the back? Or what if it, the rum is in the back with the body? Huh, where did I put it? Are you sure it's not in your secret room? Oh, was that a sore spot? I don't bring alcohol in there. It would interfere with my research. I see, I see. 
That was disrespectful of me. Is she doing well? Yes. She looks as well as she always has. Sleeping soundly. That's right, because um, Snow White was a, uh, a prostitute. Well, a nun. It depends on who you ask. But she was born in the brothel, so... Dorian Gray would have been like a father figure to her. Oh, that's gross. That's gross to think about. I guess his room is the same as it has been since then. When was the last time you saw it? Hmm. The day before the wedding, I guess. He's a man of simple taste. Uh, bleh. He's a man of simple tastes, wouldn't you say? That room must have been decorated to his wife's taste. It was a cute room with all sorts of decorations. <laughs> you really are ignorant, Karamia. I almost want to pop your skull open and count the wrinkles on your brain. Oh, don't go so creepy on me. Wait. Are you saying it's different now? Yes. It's done a complete turnaround from the room in your memories. It's a dark and unpleasant place. Just like the world inside his mind. Why do you know that? A short version, because I am a conciliaire. Yeah, he just knows everything. Carries on the on the ship. It's fine. That's just how we drive here. Oh. Then she does this, and she spills the beans. Today. I came clean to her about you. I wonder how that'll turn out. She seems to have accepted it rather easily. She even said she'd help me find a cure for you. She really is a good girl. That's right. There was something I meant to report to you. A long time ago, I told you I'd heard a very interesting story from a traveller, remember? It was a story of forbidden magic, from a faraway country. It seems like I'd finally be able to get my hands on the book with the information in it. On it. It's a technique of rebirth, so I'll have to let you die one more time. I'm not sure I have the courage to even attempt it, but I do think it's a technique I should hang on to. At any rate, I'm glad things are progressing. I desperately want to hear your voice again. Oof. Man is about to try forbidden magics. And also, it involves his wife dying again. So maybe, perhaps, this is all according to plan. I feel kind of jealous. Of me or of her? Um, both, I guess. It must be nice, you know. To have someone you care about like that. I'm sure you'll find someone someday. I hope so. It would be nice if that person were him. 
I met her in the church. I think we got all this, yeah. We got all this. Cool. What? I got a note. Uh, bleh. I got a notice from a shopkeep this morning. The delivery cart was attacked by bandits. I can see that from the mess. Where is the item I ordered? They ran off with the gold and gemstones and then burned everything else with the horses and driver. They must have run off in a hurry. We found currency dropped in their tracks. I will take my men and pursue them. Are you sure you're fine on your own? What if it's a trap? What do you take us for? We're not going to fall prey to some bandits. Let's go, Bercy. Y yes, ma'am. Why did you call me? One second. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Why did you call me here? I may be a skilled physician, but I can't bring a child person back to life. The shopkeep said there was something you were really looking forward to on that cart. Are you curious? I can't. Okay, here we go. Were you curious about it? Or did you call me here to laugh at me? Of course not. I wanted to let you know that it was gone right away. I heard you'd been asking where it was and when it'd be here every day. Gone. It slipped through my hands again. Wolf. Hose man. I thought the maintenance and defense of this road was the mafia's job. You can't even protect a measly little cart with all the taxes you levy. What good are you even? Why are you so mad? You just lost one little book, right? Most books are mass produced, so can't you just order another copy? Do you have any idea how many years it took me to acquire a copy of that book? Do you, Kiri? Do you have any idea how many years it took to discover that book existed, track down a copy and get it today, the day I was supposed to have it in my hands? Unlike you, time isn't meaningless to me. I can't just accept and try again next time. How could I? Doctor. Doctor. Just tell us if there's anything we can do, and we'll try to help. No. I can't depend on you. Ever since that day, I've refused to place my faith in anyone. Especially you, Katamia. You're all talk. Dr. Robin Hood, if you would please refrain from insulting my Don. Insulting him? I'm simply speaking the truth. It's just like I said back then. I believed in your Don, and he just betrayed me. 
If I didn't betray you, I it was just... I know. You couldn't do anything. My feelings don't matter. I know. And I don't care. And I know all too well that's who you people are. That's why I... I just want you to leave me alone. Don't drag me into your self-serving hero complex. Doctor. Self-serving hero complex, huh? What a harsh thing to say to you, Karamir. I guess. Could you figure out what book he was looking for? I could, but I wouldn't recommend it. You're probably thinking about finding another copy and giving it to him, aren't you? First of all, his item wasn't the only thing burned. It isn't fair to compensate one person alone. I'm sure more than a few people would turn against us after that. Secondly, he asked you to leave him alone. If you try to intervene against his wishes, he might do more than hide his face with a mask. Let's be reasonably sympathetic regarding his last book and leave things alone. I guess. I just hate feeling so helpless. Yes. However, it's much harder on our dear doctor than you. It must be incredibly painful to have waited all those months and years, only to have it snatched away from him, just like that. Okay. But between you and me, you, me, and the fence post. That definitely seems like a world's correcting itself type shit. I have to use the restroom, though. One second. All right, okay. It is break time, everybody.
A reminder to everyone to hydrate. Please remember to hydrate. Oh, that's irksome. Hold on one second. Let me fix this about this before I forget it exists. There we go. Uh, okay, that's fixed. There's also something on the axle one that's a little irksome. Ugh. Okay. Just fit the- oh, it doesn't fit the fucking frame. One second. Okay, do you fit the- you don't? Dang it. Why? It's just an automated thing. It shouldn't be- One second. I, I have to fiddle with this till it's fixed. That's just how it's gonna be. Eh, that'll work. That'll be fine. Okay. A reminder to hydrate. And here we go. I'm sorry. My plans for that book have been scrapped. The cart was attacked by bandits. Apparently it's gone. Along with all the other parcels that were on it. They told me so plainly. It's just a book, after all. This explains why he went ape shit all of a sudden. Like, I understood Hamelin coming into town and him being like, okay, it's time for revenge path, but I didn't understand him suddenly killing his wife. This incident makes more sense in the context for it to be one, one of a multiple set of triggering incidents. Also... Apparently, Hamelin is back. The man who made you suffer so much just waltz right back to into town. I wonder what they could possibly be discussing in that meeting. I'm sure they won't even give us any thought. I can only think of things as issues between Mafia family. That much is obvious. I have no interest in what regular citizens think. I guess all I can do is wait for the result, huh? Even if it's not fair. I can't do it. I know where my enemy is. I have to take my revenge. I don't think I'll be able to rest easy till I shoot him, just like he did to you. A gun? That's right. She mentioned it when she was talking about familiars. The weapons storeroom is right next to the cottage where she lives in. Okay, we're still gonna use me. Okay, cool. She said she wanted to help me. I'll have to take advantage of that. Half. Half to. Just because it is within your ability to be cruel does not mean that you are not also capable of kindness, please. Just comes by. I love you. Please. Dickhole. Sound asleep. Maybe the drug worked a little too well. Fucking knew it. Sleep soundly until morning for me. There shouldn't be any guards. Many guards at this hour. I shouldn't have any trouble getting to the weapon storehouse. Oh yes. I better put my ring back on. Thanks, dude. Will I betray you? Oh, Bunny. I wonder where I'm heading. Yeah. That's a good question, man. It just seems like you're out to fuck everybody up at this point. 
Like, you know how that bankrupt space is that small, like, not the bankrupt space, but you know, like, in Wheel of Fortune where, um, there's, uh, like a million dollars flanked by two bankrupt spaces? <laughs> and, like, the million dollars is this itty bitty strip? That's, like, <laughs> that itty bitty strip there <laughs> is, like, Robin Hood not betraying anybody. <laughs> These footsteps, those footsteps were bunnies, right? Given how fast she was moving, she must know something. Go tail her in the hall, Axel. Understood. We have the meeting about Hamelin to, to deal with today, but we're already running into issues this morning. Maybe the problems are arising from that meeting. You mean to save Hamelin? I can't imagine Scarlet and the others would try something like that. I didn't suggest the Grimms were at fault, did I? Please don't jump to conclusions. Hasty, Mr. Lion. Hmm. Kiri too smart for his own good. We come here. She burst through the clinic's door. There was no one to be seen inside. Only the sound of the medical implements clattering from the sudden change in air pressure remained. Where could Dr. Robin be? Continuing to look around the room, she noticed that the metal door was cracked open. Faint blue light poured out from the gap. Could he? Could he be in there? She hoped he was. She found herself praying as she opened the door. She stepped softly into the darkness. Good. So this is where you are, Dr. Robin. Oh, shit. Bunny. He stood with his back to her, staring at her shadow on the floor. That's a gun you're holding, isn't it? You stole that from the estate, didn't you? I thought I'd take my revenge. It was Hamelin. He attacked our wedding. Huh? He said he was my friend. He congratulated me with a bigger smile than anyone. And yet... And, and yet he shot my wife. He shot her with a smile. It's all him. The reason she won't wake up. And the reason I can't trust anyone anymore. It's all his fault. I will get my revenge against him. I won't be able to move on until I do. After I do it, the Mafia will arrest me, so... I came to say goodbye my wife. Goodbye. Yes. Yes. Once they catch me, I won't be allowed to come back here. I don't know what someone might do to her, so I decided. 
I should stop the device myself. I know I have to, but it's so hard. I've cared for her so carefully. Don't take revenge on him. You can only say that because you don't understand. Have you ever loved someone you cared about? You haven't, have you? I, I haven't, but... I'm about to. You've worked so hard to wake her up again, haven't you? And you've taken such good care of her. So why are you going to kill her? That's wrong. Give up your revenge and think about how to save your wife. It doesn't exist, Bunny. There's no way I can say that. I've tried thousands of treatments. I've searched to the ends of the earth and back. But there's nothing. Nothing at all. My hands. Knowledge and skills just are not capable of bringing her back. Have you tried talking to Mr. Kiri? Huh? He's very smart. Maybe he knows something. I don't want his help. Why? You know how he is. He'll just laugh at me and offer nothing in return. You won't know for sure until you try. I'll ask him for you. I'll beg him until he agrees. Maybe you can't do it by yourself, but with everyone's help, I'm sure you'll find a way to bring her back. Maybe you're right. You won't know until you try. Don't give up until you do. So, give up on your revenge. Back then, no one offered me a hand. Maybe if someone had helped me carry her back then, things would have turned out differently. I wouldn't have had to shut her away in this thing. Hmm. Some time had passed since Hamelin had been captured and Robin Hood had raided the armory. Bunny was still working at the clinic, as she had been. She knew that when the dream of the man she cared about came true, his dream to save the woman he loved, their relationship would change. She would have to give up her spot here to her. Even so, despite knowing what was to come, she remained by his side. Dr. Robin, I made some tea. Why don't you take a little br- Doctor? She opened the door, careful not to make a sound, and slipped into the room. The paper scattered on the floor rustled with the movement of her feet. Oh, he's asleep. Robin Hood had passed out on his desk. He must have been overworked and overstressed. Did he look like this the first time I saw his bare face? She picked up a blanket off the back of a chair and pulled it over his shoulders. Hmm? 
She froze, worried for a moment that she'd woken him. But he must have been very tired, for his eyes didn't so much as flicker as he just kept on sleeping. Good night, doctor. Just as Bunny was about to leave the room, What? Wait. Huh? A woman's voice came from somewhere. She turned back towards the clinic's main room, thinking that a patient had come in. Wait. It's coming from behind me. When she turned around, what she saw took her breath away. The apparatus Robin Hood's wife was sleeping in was emitting a blue light. Huh? She quickly covered her mouth with her hand and timidly approached. I'm glad I got your attention. The clear, gentle voice was coming from somewhere. Could you grab the component above the glass? Component? Yes, that. And then... Bunny touched the device as the voice ordered. I'm pretty sure that's the final part. Now, pull it. Are we helping his wife commit suicide? I hope not. Bunny felt herself tensing up at the word final. She gave it a timid pull as directed. The lid of the apparatus opened, a noise like rushing steam escaping it. The eyes of the woman sleeping inside opened. She looked up at Bunny and smiled at her. Thank you, Bunny. You're Dr. Robbins. I'm the reason he's so damaged. He extended my life, even though I was destined to die. His heart couldn't bear it. I've been waiting for someone lo for so long for someone like you to come. That voice. <gasps> he called his wife's name and embraced her. He said it again and again, his hands touching her all over as if he couldn't believe she was really there. I've waited for you to wake up. The day I could hear your voice again. Robin, thank you for everything you've done for me. Shit, she's about to die. Oh, but how? Bunny doesn't know how to open it. I told her how. My body may have been asleep, but my mind has been awake the whole time. I know everything that's happened here. I've seen you crying, agonizing, everything. I'm so sorry, Robin. No, no. You don't have to apologize. Oh, but at this rate you'll die. I, I have to... You've done enough, Robin. You just haven't noticed what you could do to make yourself happy. I'm sure you'll find happiness if you realize what it is. What are you saying? I, I know where my happiness is. It was when I was with you. You don't need me. 
You know that, don't you? So please, turn the machine off. It's for the better. You should have just turned it off without trying to take your revenge. My body can't survive outside the machine. Oh, fuck. I'll keep both our memories for you. So please, forget me. I love you. Robin. Oh shit, that's fucked. We're in sad town. At least we have her permission, though. That is spicy. <laughs> permission? That's great. Robin Hood's wife was to be interred in one corner of the graveyard. A jet-black coffin sat next to the hole in the ground. Manboy and Dorian Gray, the latter holding a single lily, joined Bunny and Robin to stand there in silence. Robin, are the two of you sufficient to begin the ceremony? Yes. Please go ahead. Dorian Gray drew the cross in front of his chest and set the flower atop the coffin. The moment Dorian was finished, Manboy picked up the shovel lying on the ground. Oh, uh, wait. Robin Hood looked at his hand and gently removed his ring. He lifted it up as if to peer at the shining sun through the ring of glimmering gold. I'll bury you together with my love for you. That's what you would have wanted, right? I hope. I hope that all my love will reach you. He kissed the ring and tossed it on top of the coffin. It clinked against the lid, slid off, and fell into the ground. You may continue. Very well. Brown earth covered the black coffin. They watched in silence until it was completely covered up. Hmm. Um, Dr. Robin? <laughs> what is it? She'd let the silence continue as they traveled back to the clinic, but now... What should I even say? He'd said he was burying his feelings. The man just buries his wife. Can you, like, give it a week? At least. It was probably a bad idea to talk about it. It was probably a bad idea to talk about his dead wife. Yeah. He just buried, just buried his wife. <laughs> but what else could she bring up? I don't know how lovely a ceremony it is. That helps. That's... That seems to be the topic on a lot of people's minds after a funeral. Oh, the ceremony was lovely. All the garlands and shit. It was a pity so-and-so couldn't make it. Did you see the other person in the back? This is crying so much. Of course, I could barely contain myself. But you know, I had to maintain my composure. That type of thing. Not that I've ever been to a funeral, but I assume... It goes something like that. You talk about the ceremony. That's what you talk about. You don't talk about... Well, sometimes you talk about the person. But generally, I feel like that would be... This is a touchy matter. Um, um, do you mind if I work at the clinic tomorrow, too? His eyes went wide for a moment, but then he let a conservative smile grace his face. Of course. You are my assistant, after all. <laughs> right. The conversation ended already. She was sad that he'd lost someone dear to him. But she found some happiness in the situation as well. 
yeah, the lady gave you her blessing. <laughs> this is a big deal. I shouldn't be thinking like this. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> her feelings of love for him were blotted out by sadness. She stopped trying to speak to him. Unable to think of anything to say, she contented herself with biting her lip. Do you still love me? Huh? Remember what I told you about your pupils? Your eyes still behave in the exact same way when you look at me. I'm surprised. You can still love me after saying all that. Same. Honestly? I guess I can't help it. There really isn't anything I can do now that I've fallen in love with you. Same. Honestly? I used you. Don't you think I'm a bad man? I do, and... You're unfair, too. Unfair. Yes, you told me I could keep loving you anyway. It wasn't very fair of you. <laughs> I see. But you still love me. Yes. I'm happy to hear it. Don't hang your head. Look at me. Look at my eyes. What do you see? Um, your eyes? <laughs> you truly are hopeless. He's trying to tell you to look at his stupid pupils. Do it. Taking advantage of her lowered guard, he kissed her. It was a quick, light peck. Bunny froze, eyes open wide. Now, let's return to the clinic. A uh, doctor, what was, um, <laughs> her face flushed bright red as she touched her lips. He giggled as he watched her reaction. That's so cute. It's so cute. But you did literally just bury his wife. I feel like that deserved a week. A little later, or you know, a lot later, depending. There we go. Mr. Robin, I finished sorting the documents you asked me to. How are things on your end? I'm almost finished. It doesn't seem like any more patients will be coming in, so maybe we should close the clinic for the day. I'll make dinner. You clean up the table. Okay. That reminds me, Mr. Karami and the others asked me to invite you over. Me? Why? Um, that's right. They wanted to see your face. My face, huh? It would be nice if I weren't stripped stock naked upon entering the estate. My face isn't anything special. I don't understand why everyone wants to see it so desperately. It is special. I really like your face. Really? Just my face? Well, not just your face. Even though I have a bad personality. I still like you. Bad personality and all. I see. Oh, you're so cold. I'm sorry, I'm a simple man. So you love me? Flaws and all? <laughs> Hi, Sai. Are you regretting falling for me? I don't regret it, but I do think it's weird. I wonder what it was that made me fall for you. I see. Well... 
Let me know when you figure it out. And then I'll tell you what made me fall for you. Really? Yes. Now that you've got an incentive, will you be trying harder? Yes. I'll try my best. Hmm. Your best, huh? Maybe that's what I, uh, that's part of what I like about you. Ha, huh. are you sure you should give me the answer now? Why not? It's just one part. I have many other things I like. Now, dinner is ready. Let's eat, bunny. Duh, that's really cute. Okay. Closing thoughts. Guy has a bad personality. Like, Kiri also has a bad personality. And they are my two favorite people. <laughs> so there we are. Um, I just, like, hold on one second, let me, here, I got in here for a second. Like, I can't, I don't, I like him, but at the same time, he's slimy as crap. Maybe I like him because of that, because he's not a straightforward character. I mean, if I met this dude in real life and he did this to me, I would definitely not still be sticking around. I feel like... I feel like the initial, ah, cool, you love me, I figured it out, would be enough for me to be like, oh, okay, cool, so we're gonna maintain a work relationship and anything beyond that is gonna be like, I would have dead-ass lied to that motherfucker, been like, no, I don't love you. You kidding me? No. We're co-workers. Calm the fuck down. But like, being a fictional story, I appreciate him for being different. And being a story that I can see the juxtaposition deposing bad and good endings for. I like that. Otherwise, don't, don't, don't fall for, I just, I don't, I don't, otherwise I don't get it. I just don't. So, <sighs> that's, uh, that's the end of the Robin Hood routes, good and bad mixed together a little bit um yeah y'all have a nice evening and um don't fall for married men night